Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag today, and coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changing Tale, Jesse's Rejection Path. So, anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Let's break some hearts, ladies and gents. There we go. Alright. <clears throat> Do you remember it? Of course. Wondrous Walter. She sputters mid sip, laughing helplessly. And the monkey in the cart. Aye, little nap. No organ, no cymbals, not even a hat on the howling thing. Now wait, give Walter some credit, he had a trumpet. And he didn't know how to play. She giggles, then sighs. Your gran made a steamed pudding that evening, to cheer up our poor wee disappointed hearts. Good old gran, the treats even helped, a little. I drift further down memory lane, and the monkey reminds me of another animal tale. Let's not forget the county fair, the piglet Jesse. Really, Malcolm, I see where you're going, and I'll set you straight right away that I don't regret it. We couldn't have been... what? I believe I was seven or eight. So maybe I was six. At least the county fair turned out to be more exciting than that so-called circus. I just remember you were the modiest scamp in Scotland that day. It's hard to believe the posh woman in front of me once romped around in the muck with the rest of us. She used to be as rough and tumble as any of the boys. The piglet was rubbed all over with soap to make her slippery. It was hardly a square go. I agree, it wasn't a fair fight. Though, but for the wee piggy, not you. She chased that critter like a bat out of hell. Nothing was going to stop you. I remember your eyes squinting so hard. It's a wonder you could even see. You best believe it. There was no there was no one who could do, who could outrun me. There still isn't. You gotta keep the pig when you caught it too, right? Whatever happened to the poor thing? Enjoyed for Sunday supper. Malcolm, of course not. We'd never sacrifice Gladys. She still lives on the farm with us. Mind you, she's a wily nuisance, but what good woman isn't? I don't feel as though that's a question I ought to answer. These days she eats more than my sisters and me combined, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it, right, Bulgare? Hey, talking about little Miss Gladys. Hey, that's a true Scotch lass for ye. Loud, confident, and insatiable, but always friendly and charming. And beautiful. Hey, to each their own, I say. I do prefer women with a little meat on their bones. I've never fallen hard for a woman with a snout. Is that why Jessie got this job instead of Gladys? Jessie balks as Bulgare lets out a hearty laugh. Standing there next to her, it occurs to me that Bulgare looks every bit the proud father. Nay, Malcolm. I'm just glad our Jessie finally found her true calling, and I'm happy to foster it. You're meant to be a star, Jessie. It certainly seems so. I nod, but stop short of doling out more adoration. Jessie's a woman who hardly... who already knows her own beauty, and how to use it to her full advantage. I like to think I can keep her grounded, at least for one night, by not fawning over her. As Bulgare returns to his customers, I shift the conversation to family. How about your sisters? Are they doing well? I spoke only briefly with Marion earlier today at the market. They're both fine. Marion runs the farm with father still serving overseas. She's hoping he'll be back soon, but, well, let's just say I'm relieved to have my freedom without him breathing down my neck. I recall the other MacLeod's cold, often overbearing manner. You think he wouldn't approve? I sure don't picture father coming down to cheer me on at the Stag and Nanny, if that's what you mean. We all have our own familiar struggles, familial struggles. I'm not one to pass any judgment. It might, it must be easier for you with no siblings. I do love my sisters, but Marion and I don't exactly see eye to eye. And Grace? Uh, Grace is Grace. She stays home most of the time, in her hiding spots. Hiding spots? Sometimes she'll be missing all day and well into the night. It beats me where she goes, but nobody sees her. Believe me, I've asked around. Well, strange. That's Grace for you. Marion and I would like to see her come into town more and explore her interests, but she says she's more comfortable at home with a book or a broom, so we let her be. She was, she was always a cry, quiet one. If you'll recall, so was I. But look at me now! Yes, I am. I certainly am. Hmm. She lifts her eyebrows and gives me a playful smile. My heart does a flip. Maybe it's just the ale kicking in, but I can't help it. She's gorgeous, and she's certainly not shy about flaunting it. We talk and drink for who knows how long. Inside the dang, inside the dark pub, it could be an hour or a whole afternoon. Occasionally she'll get up to do another number or serve a few customers, but she always comes back to my table. It's even started attracting some jealous looks. Reluctantly, I'm starting to think I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Jessie's up there singing again. I don't want to go, but I resolve to take my leave after the song is over. Her voice hangs on a final lonely note. Well, after the music ends. With a voice. With a woman. Alright, y'all. One second. Water time. Finally, she thanks the small crowd and then saunters over to me. Open my mouth. <coughs> mm. 
Open my mouth to speak. I just wrapped up my set. Let me grab a few things. Meet me by the front door, and I'll get you. To, and I'll get you. And I'll let you tag along on the way home. I what? You heard me, soldier. Or are you gonna make a last travel home all on her lonesome? No, ma'am. Thanks, love. I'll be right out. Mm -hmm. Jesse and I ride beside each other in the cold night air. Part of me is kicking myself for having lost track of time. Hazel is livid that I'd stood her up. It's taken every bit of my cavalry, my cavalry training to convince her to let me ride. I'm sure Agnes is worried too. But part of me doesn't care, most even. Most even. It's focused on the here and now, on the lovely woman bicycling slowly beside me. This is what focus I have left her for all those drinks. Her dress flutters in the breeze, teasing me in the darkness with glimpses of her smooth thighs. Jessie keeps looking over at me, giving me shy smiles. I need to think of something to say. It's been so long since I've spoken to a woman this beautiful. Are you warm enough? Would you like my coat? No thanks. It's so nice to feel the fresh air. I do appreciate the offer, though. Well, that didn't go as planned. Do you normally do you normally bike home alone? Yes, yes, it's a short ride, you know. But I usually don't bring men home with me, if that's what you mean. I cringe. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Just teasing you. I feel safe in Acne Krieg. Nothing out of the ordinary ever happens here. Maybe a few loose cows every now and again. Heh, <laughs> glad to hear that the town is what I remember. We've changed a bit here and there, I suppose, but all in all, we're still a tight-knit village. We see each other in the pub and on market days and at church. Her voice trails off. You don't attend anymore. Not often. Well, no, not at all. A rebel. Ha, huh, hardly. You would see me out throwing stones with the Pankhursts. No, I'm just fed up. I've grown more than a little tired of this town. It's small potatoes. I'm dying to get out into the city, to see how other people live more exciting lives. It's too quiet here. The lonely chirping of the crickets underscores her statement. Too quiet for your big personality. And my big voice. And your big spirit. I've got big plans, mister. You've never met a more determined girl. Sympathize with her. It's refreshing to hear. As much as I look forward to returning some, to some peace and quiet, part of me also longed to stay far away from here in the bigger world. Yes, the action was terrifying, but in a way it was intoxicating, too. Eye-opening at the least. I sense the slow pace of Agna Krieg living, living will start to eat away at me, too, soon enough. Well, what's stopping you? And why do you think I swing and shimmy in front of all those old codgers at the pub? Money! That's all that is keeping me from up and leaving. Bulgari treats me like a princess. He pays me fairly, too. And most of it goes to help my sisters. But I'm saving up to get out of here any day now. Her expression changes. She seems to realize she may have said too much. Malcolm, please, please don't tell anyone. I know I've had too much to drink. I haven't mentioned this to anyone, not even my sisters. They must know, don't you think? I talk to them at... I don't talk to them all that often, but yes, they must know I want out of here. They know how much I love being me. They don't share the sentiment. No, they're so much more reserved than I am. They're comfortable here. Marion runs the show at home, and Grace won't hardly set foot in town, much less a city. To each their own. Your sisters might share your independent streak more than a little. You call it independence, I call it stubbornness. It reminds me of who I recall to be the most stubborn McLeod of all. It's like, you know, water time. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, yeah. And your father, wouldn't he miss you? Jesse snorts. Father, surely you jest. Besides, he's not even here. You can't miss someone if you don't know if you don't know them. It stings inside how much I relate to the sentiment, but I keep mum. But I keep mum. I feel a kinship growing with Jesse that goes beyond how sensual she is. She's a firecracker, all right. One who knows exactly how the world works. It scares me and thrills me all at once. McLeod Homestead comes into view. She dismounts and I follow suit. Thanks for taking me this far. I can handle it the rest of the way. I'm happy to walk you to your door. She laughs. An independent woman has to maintain her credibility, doesn't she? Maybe next time, soldier. Well then, it was lovely to be able to catch up. I'm guessing I'll see you around the pub. Hopefully. I'll never turn down free drinks and great company. Have a good evening, Jesse. I'll make it a point to visit again soon. Better make it soon, Malcolm. Blink and I might be gone. She waves playfully and then bounds down the hill toward her homestead, bicycle in tow. But a girl, she's got pluck all right. I hop back onto my horse and finish up the trip home. Hazel does her best to buck me off, but I hold tight and refuse her movements. 
Hold up, girl. Ain't gonna be that easy to get rid of me. At home, Gran has left the light on. Has left the light on for me. I find her inside with tea waiting. Goodness, another long day. I thought you'd be home some hours ago. I'm just catching up with old friends, Gran. She sniffs at the air. Over a few pints and oh my, that scent! Alas, I take it. She winks almost indiscernibly, and I blush. There's no hiding a night at the at the front of the stag and nanny, is there? Oh, let me put away the goods and I'll tell you all about it. After stowing away our market supplies, we dine lightly on mutton broth and wheat scones. So, out with it, dear. Tell me about your first day back. Well, market was an adventure. Crowded but crowded, but fewer goods than I remember from last time I was there. I'm sure it'll be some time before things get back to the way they were, if they ever do. Everyone's been feeling the bite of the war, love. Did you run into any old friends? Well, I did see the two McLeod girls, Marion and Jessie, too. She looks at me slyly, no doubt wondering about the scent. Oh, the fine lasses they are. Marion is a right angel. It's been some time since I last saw Jessie, though. How are they faring? They seem to be doing well. I imagine it's been quite difficult with their father gone. I agree. You know, Marion stops by here weekly with cornmeal and eggs. She routinely brings bread and muffins as well. I usually repay her by asking her to take mail to town, or darn my sock holes, terror that I am. I nearly choke on the stew at the thought of having to handle Agnes's socks, a fate I would wish upon no one. Crud, you know she works very hard tending to the farm and taking care of her sisters. I laugh, shaking my head. Well, if nothing else, it's encouraging that you do accept help from, t from her from time to time. On the rare occasion, yes. So what is Jessie up to these days? She's taken, she's taken up singing at the Stag and Nanny. Is that so? She does have a lovely voice. I suppose Bulgar talked her into that. No, I get the sense it was her idea. She's very, she's very much her own woman. I miss her laugh and her body jokes. She stopped by a few weeks ago with a small cask of hard cider and a new kerchief for me. Such a doll. I miss her. What about Grace? Does she drop by as well? Oh, with Grace I don't see. Honestly, I don't remember the last time she was by. Ever since Christmas she's been holed up on her on their farm, I hear. I don't know what's happened to her, but Marion tells me she's become quite the recluse. Doesn't speak often, and spends most of her, her time outdoors wandering. There you go. Water time. <laughs> I worry about the poor child. Jessie takes her to the pub now and again and get her out of the house. But if here she might not be the best influence on such a young, troubled girl. I nod and sip at my tea, and finally ask what I've been avoiding as, well, as long as possible. And my parents, do they visit? Grandmother becomes... <laughs> Just casting her eyes downward. They're both well and truly settled in the city. Your mother is a seamstress in a factory. Your father works as a mill floor manager. Too busy to come calling on this old maid. That is that. I guess I'm not surprised, though I am saddened that they abandoned poor Agnes. A cold reminder of how distant we had all become. At least warmth still radiated from Gran, bless her heart. She and my grandfather have always been my beacons. Paternal and maternal fosters I needed in youth. They were always there for me, and now I am here for Agnes. Her dedication to the farm is unrelenting, maybe even misguided, but I am damned if I do not join her in the plight. Gran looks back, Gran looks back up to me, tears in her eyes. I'm worried bringing up my parents has distressed her, but then I see that she smiles. Malcolm! I really can't tell you the joy, the joy I feel to see you sitting there across from me, the golden sparkle in your eyes that I always saw in your father's eyes, and in your grandfather's too. It's as if you've brought a piece of them both back home to me. My heart melts a little. I try to laugh it off before my, dear, before my eyes tear up too. Nothing brings me greater pleasure than to see you smile, grandmother. Come, let's make our way to bed. Tomorrow's late. This morning sleep is calling us both. I lay in bed, drenched in moonlight, reflecting. It's hard to believe less than 24 hours had passed since I rode into town. Less than a week since I was in an overcrowded barracks waiting to come home. As I close my eyes, the sparks of flashbacks fall into my thoughts. The shy smile of the young woman welcoming back just last night. Jessie in her flashy dress, swaying on stage with devil-may-care grin. Rain struggling with her packages. Bagheer's warm embrace. Grandmother's scent. Explosions, gunfire, shouts of battle cries, the creeping dread of each dawn that I feared might be my last. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this takes place during World War One, which is funny because I just started playing Amnesia the Bunker. 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.